The uh, up-and-coming uh, comedians kind of stepped back a little bit. They, they got a little nervous because of hecklers. How do you deal with all of that? Um, hecklers, wow, they're fun. Uh, <laughs> The Are they really out in force too at, at your? Uh, you know, it, it depends on where you go. Um, we, it was uh, my first real experience with a heckler was uh, in Ventura. I was in the place, and the guy called out my punchline, and I was kind of lost it for a second. <laughs> I told him to go screw himself, oh. and then I recomposed and I fixed myself. And I was like, thanks, and and you know, I was really thrown. But um, it's good. You know, because I needed to, it, it taught me to work on that joke. It taught me, okay, that's something that somebody knows. Um, it, it's, it's a part of crowd work. It's going to happen, you know, uh, especially hosting a show, you tend to pick on the audience and look for crowd response. So at least I'm getting some kind of response. The, the, the worst part, and, and I haven't had this happen to me, and I hope I don't, I'm sure it will. Um, I was traveling to a gig with um, a good friend, Ocean, and a uh, comic uh, delay. And they're talking about doing shows in like Miami at the West Day, at the the Improv down there, and how on a Tuesday night the host will pretty much set you up to like boo you out, like the feature is set up to to fail, like like these are the kind of clubs where you go on stage if they don't like you they will start boo, you know. Wow. I, I, I've had silence before, but I can't imagine <laughs> the whole crowd turning angry on you like, Woo! And, and these guys that I know that are telling me these stories are funny people. So I'm like, oh. Uh. Now, what does silence uh, feel like when you're up there? You are swimming. You are drowning looking for that light that is not coming from the guy in the back. And you're just like, oh, my God, where's the light? Oh, my God, okay. And the best thing, my friend Ocean said. Oh, is the light your timer? Is the light is your timer, you know. Okay. And, and, I've, and I've seen comics get off. You know, early because they're bombing. But you know, you're booked to do that time. If you're paid to do that time, it doesn't matter if you're bombing. You know, biggest headliners will bomb. Uh, you get up and you do your time. You own it. That's your time on stage. It doesn't matter about the audience. You do your thing. They'll like you or they won't. You know, um, you do your thing, you, and that's the best. Thank you. I went to uh, the uh, the Ice House with the Annex. Uh -huh. You know, the new guys. Are, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I run a show. With, I actually run a show at the Annex. So that's the one we went to went up there. there. I think I don't know if you were there, but was, this kid went up there, man, Latino, and he started his gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was and like two or three minutes Romano. into it, the crowd just started talking amongst themselves. Uh, oh yeah, that's texting. I mean, you could hear what was going on over here. But At he least silence. They're listening. It, dude, it was just nothing. We felt we were like, oh my god, this kid. Come on, we're like. That's probably what they were doing on our first show, right? Oh, was that? No, At least they didn't boo us. Uh, it was silent. In so here, thank right? goodness they couldn't boo us. Well, Pat, Pat kept the door closed for us. That's one of the good things about going out and getting on stage every night. Like that's one of the things that a lot of my comics told me in the beginning to do is to go get on stage. And so you go do things like um, open mics or, or bars. Uh, bar, it's what we call bar chops. Um, you do a, a place like the Improv. It's set up for you. You know, people are sitting down. They're looking at you. They want you to watch. But then they run shows in like bars. Like I, I actually recently did a show on a TGI Fridays. Okay, which <laughs> basically you go into. A well, where is the stage at that place? Oh my God! So I'm ba like, if you've ever been to a TJ Fridays, they're like tri level. You know what I mean? And so they right, put me up yeah. at, between three tables. They had like a guitar amp and a microphone, and the guy had just been screaming from. The, the, the back of the bar like <laughs> and he's drunk obviously he's been kicked out of the Olive Garden before and now he's at Fridays and his heckle through so I see day. obviously he's on the comedy circuit yeah he's like no this is not the comic this is no 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 I know I'm oh. saying from restaurant to restaurant oh from restaurant to restaurant yeah so he's you know so he starts heckling at me and I'm like okay I try to talk over him at first because I'm in a restaurant you have to talk a lot in a restaurant or a bar you have to be loud you have to be obnoxious you have to command the audience you can't just tell them these little anecdotes you have to come at them with your heavy hitters and be loud and commanding and I tried to go over this guy and he kept going and I was like fine you know what why don't we just give the redneck hillbilly the microphone <laughs> and so he tried to say something and he couldn't come out with something and I, I hit him again, and he came with something else, and I think he went and he turned his hat around, you know, and I was like, oh, look, he's getting all Sylvester Stallone over the top on me, right? And next thing you know, he's bought me three shots on stage, and he's not heckling anybody anymore, and we're having a great show, but it's like, this is, you just, it, it, it was a learning experience, you know what I mean? And I, and I had a really good set that night by not doing my material, because he gave me something to work with. Um, that's, that's the hardest thing about silence, is because... I will react off what the crowd's doing. My, you know, and back to that question you had about material changing or the same material. Depending on how the crowd reactions get, my material will change because I'll feed off and it will inspire me to new things on the spot that I'm like, oh, where did that even come from? So when you have a bit that you're working on and you feel it's not working, do you always have like a backup one, or do you just go with the flow? I, I have my bits that I know should hit. Like if I, oh, I just tried that new one, or like I have a Michael Jackson bit that I do that is either it hits. 
or it offends the crap out of the entire room, you know? And you're like, oh. And really at that point, you have to go to something strong because now they don't like you anymore. And they're looking at you going, we are like Michael. I can't believe you just said that. And you're just like, oh my God. Like, and Michael Jackson is a very touchy subject because like, even the, the people who love him will either laugh and laugh with you or they will get pitchforks out and, you know, you... you did you just say Michael Jackson is very touchy? Yes, I did. Say okay, just making sure. Just subject. making sure. <laughs> he used to be. Very <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, come, on, come on now. Oh. <laughs> no touchy feeling it was, but uh, it's no Jesus. Shout out to Gen K Floral Design in uh, Orange County. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Todd, I got a question for you because you know a lot of people. We hear him all the time. You know, we see him in different groups. Uh, Bob Bollinger. I mean, he's never. Said Shout out to the OSAs that. at DreamWorks. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, you know, you got the entire department at DreamWorks listening. So uh, you know what? Hey, DreamWorks is listening. They can have all the shoutouts they want. <laughs> that's our that's our biggest tech audience yet. But one of the things I was wondering: people who think they're funny, they want to make that transition. What uh, What do you recommend? I mean, where do you start? How open do you mic. Um, open mic because you can be funny and it's it's awesome. But um, and you, you can also think you're funny. You can think you're funny, <laughs> like. I still don't think I'm funny. I don't know. I, I, I hope. Um, but it's just getting, it's, go get it on an open mic because once you get on stage, it's a completely different thing. And uh, I like, I still, I, I call this what I've started my sophomore year. I, I just finished my freshman year, my first year, and I still have so much to learn. I feel much more comfortable on stage now, but I, I, I'm, a new, I'm a new, I'm a new fight. There's, these guys are beasts out there, and all I can do is learn from them every day. It's amazing. And all you can do is, Take that first step. That first step, getting out there, going to an open mic, uh, great places like this. L the first place I ever did was LA Pizza. It's a little comedy. Uh, it's a pizza parlor in Granada Hills. They have a stage there. You can sign up at SoCalStandUp.com. It's a great place for a beginner comics. You go in there, you st you sign up, you'll go do six minutes, and you'll bomb, or you'll have a good time, and you'll come back and do it again and have good pizza. And let me ask you something. I mean, I've always wondered: do, do all these comics when they go to different clubs? Do you always get paid? Or no. is there times that you just no. go to home? I mean, craft? I mean, I I do a lot of shows for exposure um, and gas money. <laughs> um, yeah, do they, do they throw tips up there or what? No, uh, I mean, you know, you get a good promoter, they'll take care of you. Comedian, like money. comedian, not stripper. But, but then again, you're also looking for shows at. Um, you know, big venues where you can, you know, it's nice exposure to get on the venue and to learn. I'm happy to be on the stage anywhere. I mean, I love to get paid. I do get paid. Um, but I'm not quitting my day job anytime soon. <laughs> I'm with Chelsea Handler that's going to make $12 million last year. I think that's what the Forbes list said. Wow. Right. Wow. $12 million. $12 million. Uh, one of the highest paid comics. I think the other guy is the guy from the Mirage with the puppets. Uh, well, no, yeah, he's getting $100 million over 10 years. Yeah, he's... Ooh. Jeff, I think it is, or... Jeffrey, What's his uh, name? Jeff... The, the puppet Jeff. It's not Dunham. Yeah. It's, uh, not Matthew. Jeff Dunham? I know Jeff Dunham. Jeff Dunham is the puppet guy, but it's the guy that's at the... the uh, oh, I just saw his name all He's over the place. He's fairly new, isn't he? Callers, call it now with well, the name. Took, if you uh, know it, we will put you on the air. Yeah. Took, uh, no, but you know what's funny? The guy who was doing the puppet work, everybody says he's fairly new. I watched his interview. And Terry, I Terry Fator. Terry Fator. Terry, Terry Fator. Yeah. And when they interviewed him on primetime, he was talking about how a lot of people have said, well, Mike just said, oh, you know, he's kind of new. <laughs> <laughs> and he's kind of new, you know, and they feel it's unfair that he's getting all these accolades and, you know, $100 million contract. But he says, if you go back, he's been doing it for 20 years. You know, refining his craft, working on it, uh, building the puppets, you know, work. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, the guy's, the guy's hysterical. Yeah, he I have a puppet. Show. <laughs> hey, bro, stock puppets don't count, okay? Oh, all right. I mean, uh, th those are your military days, the thing back there. You know? I... Did Angelo recomment on the status? Oh, he said he's sorry. Angelo said he was sorry because he didn't realize what he was talking about. <laughs> that's okay because he went to Dime Bar High School. We didn't have the best education system there. <laughs> all right, well, that's okay because Mike doesn't usually know what he's talking about. So, uh, where are you going with that? Both mics. All right, well, hey, well, shout out to Elon Cohen uh, and. Cohen Exports up in, uh, we now have listeners up in Santa Barbara right now, guys. They're just popping in right now. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to keep. And, 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 oh, to David Noble Jr., sorry, if they're going to listen. You know, hey, if they're going to listen, you know, feel free to shout out to them. Hey, another question for you. How do you do when, um, you know, you're in some of these clubs? Do, do a lot of you guys know each other? Do you all travel in the same circle? When, when I started, yeah, we do. Uh, you go, you see the same people every day. <laughs> I mean, there'll be like a couple different, but I see uh, that those of us that are really out there grinding and trying it, uh, we're out there every Every night, and I run into the same four or five people. And I, I run into at least five people that I know every night. You know, at a different show somewhere, a different venue. We're always out performing together. It's nice because it's a nice little family. And um, when I started, it was very intimidating because everybody seemed to know everybody, and I didn't know anybody. And here I am, just this new. And um, some of the greatest people just took me in and were like, "Hey, 
you've got good energy. You've got, you know, you, I like you're a good person. Let's get you going. And they've been really helpful. I, I, I can't thank enough people for that. I can't thank people like Ocean, like Brian, um, like Ed Greer, you know, like just, just so many great people out there that have done, been so great for me. That's a good question or a good comment. Where do you find the energy? Because in the past, I've met other comics. Um, and what's funny about so many of them is you get them on stage, the well, light goes that's, on. That's their job. And I understand funny. that. Forgive me, I used the wrong word. But, you know, they light up on stage, they go crazy. But as soon as they're done and their set's over, these guys are dark. They're almost sadistic, like if they're borderline serial killers, you know, and they just they go into this whole other world. But yet you don't seem to have that persona. Um, I'm very much who I am on stage. I mean, I, my, my buddy said it's a lot easier to be funnier than it is likable. And he said that I, one thing that I have is that I'm likable on stage, and that it's, um, and I'm gonna take that as a compliment. I'm not like it's not like it's or anything, but like it comes across. I, I just try to be very relatable with people, and that's how I am in my life. It's, my my friends have always said I'm the guy in the bar that will spill your beer, and you'll end up buying us all a drink. Nice. Well, all right, I can do that. Let me ask you for a little bit of advice from you. Uh, if I go to a comedy show, mm -hmm. how do I avoid getting picked on? Don't sit in the front. That's it, right? Then I'm sick, because that's what I do. I go to the back. Man. Don't take a beautiful woman. Um, don't wear a stupid hat. Oh, dude, you're probably you're shave that goatee. All right, man, that's dude, like get three strikes <laughs> up, brother. <laughs> Woo. Um, wow. um, that shirt probably isn't going to work for you either. <laughs> um, and I would probably do sorry, Mike, your front row here. All right. Wow. I was going to say, you know, <laughs> you know can um, I sit behind you, bro? <laughs> but doesn't that kind of when you pick on somebody though, Todd? Doesn't that kind of Get them to want to start heckling you. No, or, but no, it's okay. If, if, if we're picking on you, yeah, we're looking for some response. But if you don't really want to get picked on, don't say something. <laughs> don't be the guy when he when the guy says, "So you know who, who likes the NBA? Nobody likes the NBA. Stupid! Don't say that because then he will come at you very hard. You know, be like, yeah, call me cute, funny, <laughs> and they will leave you alone. I mean, if you just clap and smile the whole time, they will never ever pick on you at a comedy show. They'll be like, I love this guy. He laughs at everything I say. You will get shout outs the entire thing. In fact, if you come do that at my show, I will take good care of you. Because you know, <laughs> right it's kind of funny. Right. In, in uh, when did I go to Vegas? July, June for Kiwanis convention. You can go to Vegas every. Year. I know, but we saw oh, Jay. Take me, please. We saw Jay Leno though, right? Oh, and it was a Kiwanis. How could you, you know? miss him with that? Chin. Yeah, you know, it was Kiwan no, he was at he did a show for the Kiwanis uh, International Convention, and, like and he picked up, yeah, kind of, yeah, basically, and he picked on a couple of the guests, and I was like, ooh, you know, but it was just kind of like, wow, even in this setting, you know, he didn't hold back. Well, I mean, we call was, that crowd work, and you know. Usually a host will do it, um, especially because you don't want to always. Because as a host, your your goal is not to be always funny, but to be the hero of the show. Kind of, you got to keep the show moving. You got to keep the energy up so that the other comics get. Oh, excuse me, I want to break the microphone. Oh, you got a cough drop. Yeah. Oh, oh, hey, <laughs> but, thanks for telling me about that after. <laughs> yeah, something you could have told me before. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, but you got to keep the energy up, and you got to keep going. You got to. So you tend to not do all your bits, and you tend to riff a little bit and work with the crowd and talk to people. And when you're not always getting the response that you want and people aren't laughing, most people will laugh if you insult the audience. <laughs> most people will laugh if I say that you look like a serial killer or just put a baby in a microwave. Okay, and then I'll come back to that like three more times. And they'll be like, ah! you've, been, you've been on his Facebook. I was going to say, both, I, I, both seem true, so okay. Right, right. Exactly, and that's what they'll look at this guy, you know. Or, or, you know, you'll find someone in the audience that looks like a celebrity, and you'll pick him up. Like, oh, look, we got Ricky Martin with us today, you know. Or, you know, when the first time I hosted the comedy store, the guy sitting in the front row looked just like Joaquin Phoenix, with beard and everything. And, man, I had, I was like, thank you, brother, for sitting there tonight. I, I went up and I had to, because I, I was hard on him all night long. So don't look like a celebrity and sit in the front row either. So, but do they have, like, when you go to different locations, they have di uh, nights where you're the host, or do they rotate? You guys rotate them? Uh, well, no, it depends, because different shows have different producers, um, different bookers, and, you know, so it's just it just depends on where you get in the lineup, you know. Um, I like to host a lot right now because I am new, and it teaches a lot. It gives me a 